Well, hello, it's been a while since I've done an update on uh, gaming or recorded any sort of video, really. Um, I have been playing away at Starter's Orders when I've had the chance. Um, I play, as I said before, quite a maximalist game, I guess you could say. Sorry, I'm just not quite happy with my sound. I think that's better. I'm not sort of breathing on the mic now. Um, yeah, so my strategy is basically uh, get as many good mares as possible um, in the barn once they have finished their five-year-old career or ones that I can buy through the auction. Anything that's either a proven group or listed winner with decent stats to a company or even ones that aren't that just have some positive stats like a high potential bar, a lot of solid bars that I feel like I could combine with proven stallions and might make something special so you see i've got 206 mares in at the moment you, know, you see i had as many as 255 i had a bit of a, a slim down to um it's probably down to about 160 or something and then i bought a few when they've come up for auction and i've retired a few when i feel like they're not much use anymore you know not prospects of winning pattern races etc um and yeah the system goes on most of them are in full now I have just a few left um, to uh, match up. I've gone through and like planned matings for a lot of these. I've worked out which uh, I've listed which stallions I've been with, what the produce progeny was, if it was successful, and a few other ones to try. Um, I think I've got far enough in this game. That I realise like where the good families are, what the good stallions are, um, and but you know whenever the game, a game bred horse, is produced that goes to the top, I'll look at the pedigree, and if it's a different line to what I've seen before, then I'll uh, I'll give that stallion a chance and uh, and try and bring it into my line. The worry is going to be that this Bound for Glory is such a dominant stallion. You see his uh, his statistics at the top. He's the best stallion in the game and a lot of these and a lot of my horses are are by him so i'm gonna have to do something to sort of keep the bloodlines fresh i have got a couple of other different families but i think if you know a few more years down the line it's going to be a bit uh, a bit joined together it's going to be hard to to bring anything new into them but hopefully something else happens that you know the game always develops and um Yeah, hopefully something new comes up and as we're sort of part way through the season, probably more than half, we just finished Glorious Goodwood, which was a bit of a disaster, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I think I had one or two winners, but Royal Ascot was good. I think I, I had like 10 or 12 or something ridiculous there. Um, looking at the older horses um, in play at the moment, um, I'll just run, scroll down and point out any any of my main earners. Salt and the Scramble's been winning group ones basically wherever I got five on it hasn't been running. He's been pretty efficient when I've been riding him and then when I haven't he's not ridden quite so effectively and he finds it a bit tougher. Um, needs to move quite early anyway. Um, what else have we got? We've got a lot of horses that are, are struggling but are still sort of picking up place money have won their group ones and have been a bit harder to place as older horses maybe a bit regressive um what have we got poisonous queen's been a bit disappointing was sort of the sultan of scramble following around um i got five on it but has had a couple of opportunities but got injured in the nassau and was a bit disappointing in the pretty poly as well um so that's been a minor disappointment. Uh, Ballinley Lady was one of my top performers last year at a mile four, has regressed a little bit, has managed a couple of group one placings, but has gone downhill a bit. My so-called life's been a bit of a success story, quite prolific, won a lot of races, managed to get a group two and placed at group one level. Probably gonna struggle to get the group one, but keep trying. You know, it's a pretty good earner. These apples won the gold cup. Um, I mean, won the Sagaro and the Dubai Gold Cup as well. 
Um, just find it a bit sharp in the Goodwood Cup. He's, he's a bit of a grinder. He doesn't have the most fantastic bars. Um, but yeah, he, he managed to win the Gold Cup for me. What else we got here? Um, Mrs. Gibson's Jam, another one who got injured la last time, um, but has finally broke through at group level. Always had quite nice bars. I thought, oh yeah, this will this will be a good horse. Um, but you see, it really struggled for a while at uh, group level, but it's finally sort of found her way now. And then, frustratingly, got injured there. Um, I thought it might be Group One. Chasey Lane's a similar one. Lawless Flame's been doing quite well. Um, managed to win the Queen Anne, which was pretty satisfying because a stiff mile is quite a test for her. She she prefers a turning mile if possible. Does quite well in these international races. Um, but yeah, has been winning her share. Probably falls just short of the very very best, but. Fantastic horse, going to be great in the breeding barn as well. Um, I said top top made the breakthrough at well, has already won a Group One, but has won two Group Ones now this season. Golden Shaheen and July Cup, so it's nice to have a good sprinter. Um, maybe I need to try at five again because um, the five furlong scene looks pretty weak. I don't think I have anything in the Nunthorpe but runs with Bad Penny in the Primoris de Geest. It's actually today on this game. I got five on it. It's just, it's going to become pretty soon, I think, in the next couple of races, the highest earning horse in the history of the game, of my save anyway, and only a four-year-old, so hopefully has another year. Just been fantastic. So adaptable. I think a stiff mile she'd just about get away with, but anything a mile one to a mile four. No matter what the ground, just seems unbeatable. Just has this incredible cruising speed and gets into races very, very quickly. Yeah, just the best horse I've produced. To me, it seems sort of surprising because I guess she has more acceleration and speed combined than most horses who get MR4. That's probably what does it. But the sort of secondary stats are a bit, yeah, you know, pretty good. Cruising burst is halfway. Extra speeds up there, just dominant. The arc's going to be more of a test. That always seems like a difficult race to ride and win in the game. Just something about that big field, especially on a hold-up horse. Um, but I'd like to think she'd get through the season unbeaten, unbeaten, and become the um, top-rated horse in the game. Uh, Emma Zuns has been a star performer. Another one who's managed to win group races in spite of I got five on it being around, made up for um, Poisonous Queen being below par in these two fillies group ones. She really wants a mile three, a um, bit of a twilight horse, but has such ability that she can get away with it. Another one by Bound for Glory, as you see. Um, yeah, hopefully that. She'll do well at the end of the season as well. There's the Phillies race, at the Breeders' Cup, Mile 3. I think there's another Group 1 somewhere internationally as well. Yeah, she won that race last year. It just just about a sharp Mile 4. She can be effective as well. But yeah, now she's proven, probably improved a little bit this year. Um, at Mile 2, then there's probably no need for that. Yeah, she's got a very good... Uh, those two bars are probably quite significant as well with her. Um, I Eat Men Like Air, another one, um, has been filling in well at a mile four and a mile five. Um, well, a couple of the group twos there. And I think any time when I'm going to run, um, i got five on it at a mile two, or if there's just a group one where she's not there, then she'll probably be my number one at a mile four. Um, yeah, I think you know, if I was riding her, that might have been a second as well. Already has the one group one. Where was that? Actually, won the Irish Oaks. It's a very nice horse to have. Um, Solitude Stanley got her first group three. Tia Filio Loco, one of my sort of pet project, has been doing well. 
Um, took a long time in the 40s and 50s, but it's gone on a bit of a winning spree now and is up to 78. Has these, it's one of these funny horses with a lot of unrealized potential. Secondary stats are awful, so it's probably not going to go that high. Um, but it feels like one that, that can keep on climbing and climbing. Might do better at a five, as a five-year-old as well. Uh, Mahadan Knight is a group one win I bought. Doesn't quite seem up to it anymore. Uh, a lot of these three-year-olds won um, group ones, have been placed in all these three-year-old only group ones, but are probably going to struggle uh, in the open company, but maybe next year or the year after when those things open up. It's going to be tough for them because i got five on it's going to be around next year as well. But hopefully they, they chisel away and uh, earn a bit of prize money. Uh, Mrs. Medlicott won the Irish Oaks and the Ribblesdale. Um, seems like uh, she's from a good family. Hopefully that's one that can be a sort of I got five on it type animal next year. I'm probably going to try see if I can stretch her out for a mile six. It doesn't, there's no reason why she would get it on the pedigree to be honest, but I might try it. The Gush, um, another one with fantastic statistics, won basically all the three-year-old only um, mile group ones. South African Classic, 2000 Guineas, French Guineas, Irish Guineas, St. James's Palace, Prix Jean Pratt, and only second though in the Sussex. Um, they've both got beat by this thing, who's going to be a bit of an obstacle, I think, but hopefully they... They're probably both not going to be sort of standout stars, but they're both going to win plenty of those mile group ones. Um, going forward, what else? One pocket sh slim, another one of these who's maybe going to struggle a little bit this year. Bad Penny um, got her first group one in the Diamond Jubilee and was second in the July Cup. Hopefully her and I said top top for the next year, probably two years in her case, they're gonna be accumulating the sprint group ones. Another one, she does need six. I don't think there'd be any reason to try her at five, like I said top top. But yes, yeah, hopefully she's gonna gonna win plenty of those. Check neck. <laughs> this was a surprise case. Sort of an ordinary pedigree, the great boy. Seems a decent stallion and was a good horse in his own right, 11 group ones, but was sort of in the shadow of uh, Jude the Obscure. Um, but it's doing all right as, as a stallion and high windows was, I think, won the Northumberland plate, something like that. It was just like a listed level two miler. Um, and yeah, this, at the start of the season, it came in as a pretty ordinary handicapper, got beat in a couple of handicaps, um, and then surprised albeit in weak re renewals, managed to win the South African Derby and the Irish Derby and was third in the uh, the Epsom race as well and third in France. So that's been a nice surprise. Probably going to struggle next year, but stays well. That That is definitely one for the ledger. I thought I'd just take in the Voltager first. Hopefully you can do the... Uh, can add the ledger. It'd be feel like a real achievement to get three group ones out of that. Um, who else we got? The double chop. Oh yeah, this was the uh, female miler. Got beat in South Africa, but then won the English, Irish, Guineas, and the Coronation. It's going to struggle, I think, in the mile group ones, especially with the Gush and Lawless Flame and the game horse, Kazakov French, around. I'll probably keep in training for another year. Um, Hopefully can can do her bit. Um, Divine Hammer won the Oaks. Again, wasn't a vintage renewal. A bit of an obscure pedigree by a two miler. Um, and was third in the Irish Oaks behind Mrs. Medlicott. It's like one who's going to find it hard next year. I'll probably again keep in training at four. Um, Another one who'd probably get a mile six, so worth a go in the 
the ledger. And that could be her angle um, next year as well. It's probably going to be a sort of Irish ledger, Yorkshire Cup type player. Probably how I see it going. Uh, a lot of these just handicappers who are winning races, as you see, but probably going to be moved on by the end of the season or, or sent to stud. Um, and then we're into the two-year-olds. Um, it doesn't feel like a fantastic crop. And there haven't been any Group 1 two-year-old races yet. The Mornie's coming up in a few days, I think. Um, but I'd like to think they'll, they'll win sort of half a dozen Group 1s between them by the end of the year. I think Squeezer Vig won the Winter Castle. Doesn't have particularly great stats. Just a bit of an early two-year-old. Um, Canfin Flero won oh, just a, a weak Group 3 at Cranji. What else have we got? Plenty of these will. I, I might be skipping past potential group winners here. Um, Mukashi Mukashi looked like one of my best ones. Is a half sister to I Got Five on It and Mad Girl's Love Song. Um, so it kind of comes out of a blue hen, really, Sweetness and Light, who's produced also another group two winner that I don't own. Um, yeah, she she won the three group races and then just seemed to struggle for pace in the Molcombe. So I think going up to six, I'd be pretty optimistic she'll go close in the pre-morning. And hopefully, like this, a lot of this family, she'll get a mile and maybe even further next year. Um, she's out of a seven furlong horse, uh, by a seven furlong horse, sorry, Razumahin. Um, so maybe won't be getting over a mile or mile one uh like i got five on it does but you never know there's a bit of random factor in this game isn't there um yeah i feel like plenty of these others will be winning group races but i had a lot of them beat at um goodwood which was a bit disappointing uh marcus halberstram was third in the Chesham, where I think I had the first eight, yeah. Um, and I think Lady Lazarus got quite a good, ironically, front-running ride from Spencer. Um, but then he came out and won the superlative. Be pretty optimistic he's going to win a Group 1. Another one by the Great Boyg, by the way. Probably a stallion I need to be using a bit more. Um, Lady Lazarus, who did win the Chesham, then second in the Sweet Solera. Uh, probably puts a limit on what she can do. Keats is dead, so won the Duchess of Cambridge. Fairly good stats. Um, will stay seven, is in the pre morning but probably going to get out of pace there. I like to think there's a, a group one for her somewhere by the end of the year. And then, yeah, there we have it. That is the strength at the moment. And I'll just have a, a quick look at my two, uh, my yearlings, sorry. Uh, I can't remember which ones were, were the real standouts among these. Um, all named though. Was that quite a good one? Yeah, fairly. Uh, never more than night witch yeah that's okay i've been using that stallion throbbing gristle quite a bit it just seems like a bit of an outcross to some of my um bound for glory type families um drizzling shits yeah that looks like one of my better ones i had another good horse that was tired by come to mind as well which is another game stallion i've been using quite a lot uh, play touch touch touch. Oh, yeah, that's got that's gonna be a good one already a very high bars there by bang for glory uh, Lard the language not really be a nice stay in type though Sister oh wrong one sister Edgar. I think is quite good another one by bang for glory yeah. Solid bars there out of a good group one meaning mare whistler's mother yeah, that I remember that that one attracted me as 
looking like a good horse. Uh, tofu eating Waikarati? No, not really. Suck your own shirt? Yeah, that looks good. I think it might have. It's only got half finished application, but that's got a lot to like. And there's been a few that I've bought from uh, yearling sales this season. The ones with weird names, I just feel like will win a race or two. Um, but I thought this Andy from the 60s was uh, a pretty interesting one. It's out of a big stayer by an unknown stallion, lacking in speed, already full stamina as a yearling, which I don't think I've seen before. Um, just seems to have better stats than some of my um, some of my sort of cup horses already. Uh, secondary stats are all there as well. Big cruising burst. Yeah, that, I feel like that. Assuming everything's fine, um, that could be like a really good uh, stayer. You know, look, the dam was placed in Gold Cups and Goodwood Cups and won a long distance cup, etc. Um, it's only had one so far, well, presumably that's going to need a lot further, I might follow that. Um, yeah, that that could be a really interesting one, that's probably one of the best ones I've actually bought as, as a yearling for a long time. And no doubt, again, there's a lot of these I haven't looked at that, that could well be multiple Group 1 winners. Creep Kennedy, yeah, that, that's fairly good, isn't it? Uh, me starring you. Yeah, there's a lot of them with this kind of bar profile. You know, the bars aren't off the charts, but I feel like they're going to be 100 horses at least. And uh, my stud, I have Postscript, who was the first Group 1 winner I had in the game um, that I bought from an auction, has done very well at a stud. Um, 40 four group one winners um started off a lot of my family he seemed a little bit less reliable in producing things as he got older but um so i don't really use him anymore and but the game still likes to breed from it and has produced a few decent ones uh jude the obscure similar type of horse is by bound for glory multiple group one winner himself um produced a lot of good horses fat lip all nighter was a Brilliant six furlong sprinter, became a bit inconsistent as he got older, but has massive bars, only has half finish application, um, but has produced some good stuff like the Gush. Um, what's that, 12 Group 1 winners now, Bad Penny, and a few that stay further as well. So I definitely need to use him with um, some of my middle distance horses um, just to get that potential bar. Vuko Jabina is producing some useful middle distance slash cup horse type horses, including I Eat Men Like Air. I haven't been using him so much lately because I feel like they had a bit of a limitation, but again, maybe I need to give another chance. Is another one by Bound for Glory, though, so adds to the inbreeding type thing. Mark Anthony's by Bound for Glory as well, only has half finish application, just produce some Group 1 winners. But that, you know, he just seems like a lesser version of some of these. Um, Great Boyk, another bound for glory. Has had a pretty decent season, I think. Yeah, I, I just started sort of losing faith with him, but he's got a good two-year-old as well. Yeah, I think I need to get him back in the rotation. Um, Mr. Dreammaker did win one group, one sprint, but... It seems ingrained that he was often slowly away and a lot of his progeny are the same. I stopped using him. The game likes to pay me to breed from him sometimes. Landesher is another one by Bound for Glory. Multiple, multiple Group 1 winner, but um, all his progeny like to go left-handed. They don't run the races right-handed, pretty much all. So I've had enough of that, to be honest. I'll let the game breed from him if they want. Resumahin felt like a good horse very good seven furlong horse was just a total specialist so i didn't get a mile 
too slow for six. And um, has that half finish application. Some good bars though. Um, and has produced Mukashi Mukashi. And I think a squeezer Vig's a good horse as well. But the half finish is a bit off-putting. Judge Holden, another good miler, but half finish. Um, I gave a few opportunities to spew artist just isn't as good as Judge Holden or wasn't they were in the same the same generation but has you know produced a few winners from the one crop where I gave him chances. Crest Me Down's been a nice surprise. Um was you know won his share of group ones but you know as another bound for glory but was behind I think Landesher might have been in the same uh, age group but um yeah, hasn't had many chances, but has produced some decent ones, and um, that's a good yearling as well. So I've given him a few, and some of these unproven ones, I just feel like that they aren't going to be good enough, but the game can breed from if they like. Um, Frobbing Gristle, I like though, his first crop, I've seen the yearlings, there were quite a few good ones in there. Um, it just has, he was a bit lacking in speed, but had some nice solid bars and hopefully paired with the right mares, um, that can improve. Look at the secondary stats, very nice. Um, some of these I've thrown the odd chance to, but uh, aren't going to be up to it. Oh yeah, um, physical won gold cups and that sort of race. Again, lacking in speed, as you'd expect for a real stayer, but um, has a lot of solid stuff to recommend him as well. So I've tried to make myself some new stayers uh, for the future, and he's going to be a big part of that, paired with the right type of mare. Um, Tintin Abulation is, was better than Mr. Dreammaker. Very nice bars. Pure five furlong sprinter. Became pretty wildly inconsistent um, towards the end of his career, but did manage to win a few races, the full finish application as well, which is rare among a, a five furlong sprinter for some reason. Um, and yeah, I'm trying him out. I mean, you can't argue with those bars. Maybe you'd like this, to see the speed a little bit higher, but he's got he's even got the start as well. So um, I've been pairing him up with sprinters and even trying him with the middle distance horses as well, just to try and see if we can get the best of both in some of the progeny with with the speed and the acceleration, um, plus all the good stuff that comes with um, with the middle distance types as well. An all chapter no book, another bang for glory, so that's going to limit his opportunities and was, I think, consistently behind. Uh, I had a mare at the time, um, but managed to win eight group ones himself. Um, again, very good, solid statistics finish applications only half which is a bit limiting again um and, you know i've chucked him a few mares um to see see if he can produce anything um and yeah that is the strength at the moment i've been playing real sort of maximalist style trying to i go to every auction breed every uh, buy it everything that has a plausible pedigree um or is rated sort of 95 and above and uh, you know, just repeat and repeat and try and try produce as many yearlings as I can out of uh, this plausible sort of stock. Um, give them a few chances, and if they do have obvious flaws and aren't producing, then happy to get rid. Um, I feel like I'm going to hit a critical point in this game in the next few seasons where I'm going to have to be tougher and either get rid and have sort of harsher criteria for quality on the mares or just breed more widely with more sort of unproven and semi-proven stallions um, because it's just going to become unmanageable. It already takes months to play through a season, especially since I'm not as, as rigid as, as a lot of people. You know, I keep things in training like these, you know, horses that are sort of 90 odd hundreds Whereas oh, I've got a friend who plays this game uh, who basically, if it's not going to be a, not just a group one horse, but like a a top outstanding group one horse, then he's he's not willing to uh, 
to spend the time on it. But uh, you know, I, I quite enjoy trying to beat my record for the number of winners each season and, and try and get the best out of all these useful ones. Because sometimes they improve as well. It's quite satisfying to to get a horse its first group one as a five-year-old or, or something like that, isn't it? Um, and statistics for the season, we've had 1,327 runners and 294 winners. Um, I think given the scale and given that we always have a bit of an end, end of season rush where you know, I get rid of horses through sellers and there's a lot of end of season group ones and conditions races as well. Optimistic will probably get get near our, our previous best. It's probably going to be tight. Um, my jockeys, all of these top four ride for me. Bodanes is my uh, main jockey. I feel like he's a little bit off the pace, although I've basically just been putting him on the naps. So maybe he suffered a bit through for having fewer rides than usual. Um, yeah, he needs to get to 320 to pass his best. He's on 158, so he's going to have to hoof it. And uh, Crane's having a good season. The 45 winners, he'll probably beat beat his best. And uh, yeah, I use those two a lot as well. I don't know why. It just it doesn't seem to be any advantage. They're just sort of go-to jockeys for some reason. A bit of a soft spot for Raul de Silva in real life, but... That's another story. Um, and all time money winners. See, I got five on it. It's nearly there now. I think. What's next? Is that the, the Judmont International? So, probably that and whatever the next one is will take her above Landershire. And she'll set a pretty high bar for anything in the future because you've got all those valuable races at the end of the season to come and then all of next season. Well, I don't know, she could be up to 30 million or something. And I play the original schedule on this game as well. I haven't, I haven't put any mods in or anything like that. Um, so, you know, I'm not going not gonna to hit the ridiculous numbers. We don't have the um, Pegasus World Cup or um, uh, any of these sort of Saudi races. And there's probably a lot of the, the sort of main UK stuff as well that, that's missing as well, the European pattern. So... It is what it is, um, but yeah, she's she's going to be uh, off the chart. So I don't play the online game, but I'd, I'd be curious to see how she'd compare to, to some of the best horses on there. Um, probably not um, as good as some. I, I was reading some threads on the forum. Um, I need to get involved there as well, where people are talking about having horses that that have the full potential bar um, and like a uh, full cruising burst and, and stuff like that. I've, I've never got a, got a horse that's been been up to that. I don't, I don't know if I'll be able to, given just like the, the stock that's on my game, if it's possible or or not. But um, yeah, she she feels like a cut above even the the multiple group one winners I've had in the past, she she seems like something way above even those. So um yeah, curious to I'd be interested to see some pictures of better horses and yeah. There we have it. That's probably all I can say. Um I think I'm not gonna just upload videos of um of individual races because I feel like it's a bit tedious and it I don't I find I don't have the time to to go to those lengths and and sit waiting for videos to process and and, and go for all that it just ran away from me so maybe I'll just do things like that um, like this even to just sort of check in with where I am in the game and if I have anything notable or an, anything that I notice um, from season to season, um, just to sort of re report on how my approach is working, um, and just ramble and <laughs> share what I'm up to, then uh, yeah, I, I feel like that's what I'm going to do anyway. I, I might just post these occasional half hour ish 
season reports um, and see how we are. I, I was thinking of doing like next at the start of next year, um, like a yearling reveal as I, I sort of go through all these and see what we've got basically, see if we've got any any future stars in there. But uh, again, it's going to be tricky because you know, I'm going to have over 200 of these, probably sort of two, 225 or something by the end of the season, maybe even more than that. And I'd like to go through each one and say, oh, you know, this, this mare has produced two group one winners and the stallion did this and then look at, at the yearling and unwrap the present as it were and and see what we've got i feel like that could get old pretty fast and or i could make it into multiple videos sort of and here are my yearlings a to c and um do it that way uh, yeah I'm, I'm just not sure i'll have to think about that i think it could be a cool idea um but it might need a bit of refining all right so i've just talked into my microphone for 36 minutes so i'm gonna wrap it there Thanks for watching, if anyone did, and uh, catch you again soon.